The other factor that affect on solubility of the solid is particle size of that solid. The solubility of a substance increases with decreasing particle size due to the effect of interfacial free energy. This increase ceases when the particle has a very small radius due to the formation of electrical charge that increases with the reduction of the particle size. The effect of this electrical charge is rarely a problem in case of conventional dosage form and drug delivery system, but become important in case of nanotechnology product. The other factor is pH. If the pH of a solution of either weak acidic drug or salt of such a drug is reduced, then the proportion of unionized acid molecules in the solution increases. Precipitation may occur, therefore, because the solubility of the unionized species is less than that of ionized form. Conversely, in case of solutions of weak basic drugs or their salts, precipitation is favored by an increase in pH. This effect is important in case of weakly acidic drug or basic drug that uh, passes through the GIT tract because GIT tract experiences great changes in pH from 1 to 8. Common ion is another effect on solubility. The equilibrium in a saturated solution of a sparingly soluble salt in contact with undissolved solid may be represented by the following reaction. AB is a solid and the ions A and B are the dissociated ions. The presence of additional ion of A in the dissolution medium, that is to say, where A is a common ion such as the substance, for example, AX, that dissociates to form A and X ions, would push the equilibrium shown in equation toward the left in order to restore the equilibrium. Solid AB will be precipitated and the solubility of this compound is therefore decreased. This is known as the common ion effect. Also, the addition of common ion B produce the same effect. A plus B produce AB. And this equation represents the effect of concentration of both of ions and uh, A and B on solubility of the solid AB because constant K will be equal to the concentration of A multiplied by the concentration of B. The other factor is the effect of non-electrolytes on the solubility of electrolytes. The solubility of electrolytes depends on the dissociation of the solved molecules into ions. This dissociation is affected by the dielectric constant of the solvent which is a measure of the polar nature of the solvent. Liquids with a high dielectric constant, example water, are able to reduce the attractive forces that operate between oppositely charged ion produced by the dissociation of an electrolyte. If a water-soluble non-electrolyte such as alcohol is added to the aqueous solution of a sparingly soluble electrolyte, the solubility of the latter is decreased because the alcohol 
flowers, the dielectric constant of the solvent, and ionic dissociation of the electrolyte becomes more difficult. Effect of electrolytes on the solubility of non-electrolytes. Non-electrolytes do not dissociate into ions in aqueous solution. Unlike the electrolyte, it remains uh, as molecules surrounded by uh, molecules of the solvent. In the loose solution, the dissolved species therefore consists of single molecules. Their solubility in water depends on the formation of weak intermolecular bonds, such as hydrogen bonds, between their molecules and those of water. Therefore, in the presence of a very soluble electrolyte, the ions of which have a marked affinity for water, and this will reduce the solubility of a non-electrolyte by competing for the aqueous solvent and breaking the intermolecular bond between non-electrolyte and water. This effect is important in the precipitation of protein. Complex formation. The apparent solubility of a solute in a particular liquid may be increased or decreased by the addition of a third substance which forms an intermolecular complex with the solute. For example, in case of iodine topical solution USP, it consists of iodide 2% and sodium iodine 2.4%. Solubilizing agents. These agents are capable of forming large aggregates or micelles in solution when their concentration exceeds certain values. The aqueous solution. In the aqueous solution, the center of these aggregates resembles a separate organic phase and organic solutes may be taken up by the aggregates, thus producing an apparent increase in their solubility in water. This phenomenon is known as solubilization, and similar phenomenon occur in case of organic solvents. This figure represents the structure of micelles. We see that uh, it consists of both hydrophilic part and hydrophobic part. And the arrangement of these two parts depend on the nature of the surrounding medium. The hydrophilic part will be in the uh, outer part of the micelles when the solvent is hydrophilic. Therefore, the hydrophobic drug will be interrupted by the hydrophobic part. And the opposite is true in case of the organic solvent where the hydrophilic drug will be interrupted in the uh, uh, polar or hydrophilic part of the micelles. Qualitative descriptions of solubility. When the exact solubility of a substance has not been determined, then general expression of solubility, depending on relative solubility of the substance, can be used. Uh, the expression is defined by USP and presented in this table. The descriptive term may be very soluble. In this case, one part of the solute can be dissolved in less than one part of the solvent. It may be freely soluble. In this case, one part of the, solu uh, of the solute is soluble in about one to 10 parts of the solvent. Soluble, one part of the solute can be dissolved in about 10 to 30 parts of the solvent. Sparingly soluble, one part of the solute is 
soluble in 30 to 100 parts of the solvent. Slightly soluble, one part of the solute is soluble in about 100 to 1000 parts of the solvent. Very slightly soluble, one part of the solute is soluble in 1000 to 10,000 parts of the solvent. Or it may be practically insoluble or called insoluble. In this case, one part of the solute is soluble in less in more than 10,000 parts of the solvent. Preparation of solutions. Most of pharmaceutical solutions are unsaturated with solute. Thus, the amount of solute to be dissolved are usually well below the capacity of volume of solvent employed. Some chemicals or some chemical agents in a given solvent require an extended time to dissolve. Thus, depending on factors that affecting on the solution rate, to fasten the solution, a pharmacist may employ one of several techniques, such as first, applying heat, second, reducing the particle size of the solute, using a solubilizing agent, and finally, subjecting the ingredients to vitreous agitation. There is a problem with using heat in order to hasten the dissolution rate. For example, many medicinal agents are destroyed at elevated temperatures, and the advantage of rapid uh, solution may be completely offset by drug de deterioration. If volatile solutes are to be dissolved, or if the solvent is volatile, for example, alcohol, the heat would encourage the loss of the agent and the atmosphere, uh, sorry, to the atmosphere, and must therefore be avoided. Also, certain chemical agents, particularly calcium salts, undergo exothermic reactions, and they are not endothermic one in order to uh, uh, elevate the temperature for increasing the dissolution rate. The opposite is true. If we elevate the temperature, then the dissolution rate will be decreased. For such materials, the use of heat would actually discourage the formation of solution. Therefore, we need another method, for example, reduction of particle size. A pharmacist may choose to decrease the particle size of the solute. This may be accomplished by comminution, which means grinding a solid to a fine state of subdivision with a mortar and pestle. This in case of small scale. And in case of larger scale, we can use industrial micronizer. Most solutions are prepared by simple mixing of the solutes with the solvent. On an industrial scale, solutions are prepared in large mixing vessels with pores for mechanical stirrer. When heat is desired, thermostatically controlled mixing tanks may be used. <laughs>